you searching for? A crystal. A crystal? For what purpose would you need that? Found it. Judging by its brilliance, it seems to be brimming with magical energy. You are correct. This is part of the countermeasure I was preparing to repress the Realm Scourge. That crystal will help us defeat it? Indirectly, perhaps. If we keep digging in this rubble, we will eventually find another device. One that has the ability to turn back time. A time machine? Once this crystal is linked with that device, whoever holds it will be able to return to a set point in time. Does that mean we could travel back to our future? Unfortunately, we cannot. You first have to initiate the machine and then specify a restoration point to return to. Only once you have done that can you then release some of the magical energy stored in the crystal to return to the restoration point. The device was not yet active in our home time. Moreover, as the future has been changed, that means this present is also in flux. So... The world line we are currently on differs from that of where we originally came from. Simply put, yes. So then what use are that crystalline device of yours? From here on out, even if we fail to defeat the Realm Scourge, we will be able to redo our attempt several times over. The number of recent attempts is limited? Yes. In order to turn back time, the device has to consume an enormous amount of the crystal's magical energy. We could try to excavate crystals from here in Ardra and extract whatever magical energy there is in them, but... That would require significant labor. Moreover, according to my preliminary survey, there's not that great a reserve of crystals to begin with. Meaning, once we use up all the magical energy in that crystal, we likely won't be able to return in time anymore. How many attempts do you estimate we have? The energy consumed with each use changes depending on the amount of time travel, so I cannot be certain. But it's probably safer to assume it won't be that many. Anyway, I'll keep digging in this rubble in order to find the device and link this crystal to it. Hopefully it won't take that long to uncover. Do you care to help? Of course. Once we are done, I shall set out to bestow the rings upon the inhabitants of this continent. The ones that enable the wearers to call forth visions? If we can gain the cooperation of the people of this land, then the day we defeat the Realm Scourge might be upon us sooner. Be careful, though. In this present, Ardra, you are a stranger of unknown origin. Let's just say it is unlikely you will be welcomed with open arms. I shall keep that in mind. What the? Huh? I... I'll go gather the others! Who goes there? This is the land that will one day become Likoros. I do not understand the gibberish thou speakest. Who in damnation art thou? So this is what Amulus meant by my being a stranger 
of unknown origin. What art thou blabbering on about? They seem suitably hot-blooded. Let us hope their abilities match their attitude. Enough of thy ramblings! Prepare thyself! Interesting. What witchery is this? Whence did they appear? Let me test the strength you possess. just happened? I've never seen such power. There is no need for concern. I have not killed your companions. I heard the men of this village are the strongest in all of Ardra. <sighs> Do you not wish for even more power? Power? Of what power dost thou speak? The warriors I called forth. They are an example of what are called visions. If you wish it, I shall impart to you a ring that summons such visions. Verily? Yes, but there is one condition. And what condition is that? You must unify all of Ardra. And once you have done that, I want you to lend your full might to my cause. Th that's it? That is all I ask. Do not forget the promise you made with me this day. Where art thou going? There are other matters to which I must attend. This is the land that will one day be called Horn. Enough. You may raise your heads. Please have mercy on us. Do what thou wishest with the menfolk. Just please, spare the women and children. I fear you are mistaken. I have not appeared before you in order to bring you harm. Th then why art thou here? Soon, Ardra will be embroiled in war. W war? A village to the west shall invade, wielding a great power. If you refuse to fight back, your village will eventually be swallowed up and destroyed. Is there no way of avoiding this war? There is not. Uh. What are those? Gather your most capable fighters here. Be quick. We would fight thee? Yes, in order to judge your resolve. A as thou wishest. Then let the battle begin.
I see you are quite skilled. We are glad thou art satisfied. Here, I bestow this unto you. Didst thou use this ring to call forth those phantom-like mages afore? Indeed. That ring summons what are called visions. Fight with them alongside you, and your military might will dramatically increase. Incredible! Be warned. The warriors from the West are brutal, and will stop at nothing. If you try to resist them with brute force alone, then you will probably be no match. Then, what should we do? Will we verily be able to protect our village? You are sagacious. Utilize your wisdom to oppose them. Understood, my lord. Use the power of that ring to unite the whole of Ardra. After you have done so, I wish for you to lend me your full might. We shall gladly do so for the sake of peace in Ardra! How does it look? How does what look exactly? By now you must have some idea of how this will play out. From our point of view, the civilizations of Ardra in this age are too underdeveloped. I cannot begin to guess how much military might they would have, even if they were to band together. Do you think they could defeat the Realm Scourge? I do not. However, before the Bearer of Light appears, I will need to learn about these forces and understand how to put them in motion. Yes, I suppose so. The force that puts physical might above all else, or the force that believes it can change the progress of the war with wisdom. Which faction do you think will win? Or should I ask? Which faction do you want to win? Have you not been able to divine that result from your premonitions? My premonitions do not come at my command. I see them when I least expect them. Fair enough. I shall not throw my support behind either force. It will achieve nothing to look after one side and help them win. First, we must understand how each force fights and the ways in which they live. That is my way of thinking. Hmm. I will listen willingly if your opinion differs. No, I don't have any objections to your plan. It's just... Just what? There might be things we do not fully understand if we simply observe them like this from afar. That's all. I see. You do have a point. The state of the battle has shifted greatly. It seems that physical might now has the upper hand on wisdom. It's only a matter of time before they claim wisdom's ring, and then it will be all but over. Where are you going? The battle has been decided. An agreement was made that once they unified Ardra, they would lend me their military might. So now, you will utilize them in an attempt to take down the Realm Scourge. You have 
have defeated the leader of the opposing force. The war should be over. Your enemy has surrendered. Why do you not call a ceasefire, now that you have both rings in hand? Is it not obvious? Until we eliminate all our opposition, we'll never know when they may yet rise up against us. Even if you annex your enemy's lands, killing all their skilled commanders will not enable you to increase your military might as much as you could. We've no need for enemy commanders or their ilk, for so long as I have these rings, we are invincible! Then what became of your pact with me? You agreed that once you unified all of Ardra, you would lend me your military might. Or have you forgotten? I shall slaughter all who might defy me. Then, and only then, can we say the war is finally over. And if thou hinderest me, well... You dare turn your swords toward me? I am the King of Ardra! I shan't be dictated to by the likes of thee! When the rings are held by separate forces, each side will try to surpass the might of the other, leading to all manner of innovation. But even when one side seizes the other side's ring, they do not call an end to their war. This is due to how powerful those rings are. The King of the Unified Land will never trust anyone, out of fear that someone will try to steal his precious ring. Not even his allies, or his blood relatives. I wonder how Gilgamesh intends to resolve this problem. If you renege on your promise to me, then the bloodline of Likoros will end here and now. <sighs> you currently have two rings in your possession. You will return one of them to me. Thou presumest that so long as these two rings exist, there will be a constant struggle over them? Return one of the rings. The war is over. You must bring Ardra together as one united force, quickly. For there is a greater enemy you must soon face. Of what enemy dost thou speak? It is a foe like none that you have faced before. Even more powerful than thee, Gilgamesh. Indeed. I will be waiting. What is it, Amnellus? Was it really the right course of action to give the people of Ardra two rings? I can't help but wonder about this. Hmm. And then, to go and take one of the rings away from them. How do you judge the results? It seemed like the right approach for learning of their temperament, but... 
Go on. I hate to say it, but this attempt was a failure. Yes, I already surmised that much. You knew that already? Then why have we come all this way to Lycoros? To understand them more intimately. Okay then. Once you have ascertained all you need to know, then it's time for us to return. I never imagined they would build such a fine castle as this. It appears to be a result of them possessing a ring. How so? The ring bearer receives great power at a cost. For others will attempt to kill them over it. That is true. A new struggle arises each time someone desires to make the ring's power their own. So this castle was built in order to protect the owner of the ring. Precisely. Invading other nations with force to increase their dominion is equivalent to sowing the seeds of hate across each land. It is quite ironic that the more influential a leader they become, the less they are able to leave their own castle. Moreover, Simply overthrowing an enemy nation does not bring peace and security. They are not satisfied until they kill all who might present a threat of treason. My miscalculation lies in failing to realize just how much distrust the rings would induce in people. The rings do not have the power to cultivate hearts that value harmony. I believe therein lies an issue we need to resolve. My sentiments exactly. If only there were someone with the ability to win the hearts of people by neither force nor fear. <gasps> Who might you be? Was thou who bequeathed that ring unto my father. You must be the son of the chief of Lycoros. That I am. I heard that thou tookest back the ring my father relieved from Horn's leader. Is that true? What if it were? Give it to me! Lycoros already has a ring. So why do you require another? He attempted to kill me! His own son! Good heavens! I respected my father, and put my very life on the line to fight for him! And this is the treatment I received? He no longer trusteth even his own son! Now it's kill or be killed for me. So give me thine other ring! I shall kill mine old man, and become king of these lands! Give it to me! I will not. Thou deniest me? <laughs> so be it. I have naught left to lose. I shall take it from thee by force! What? How can one be so strong? I... I beg thy forgiveness! I'm too young to die! Mere moments ago, you said you had nothing to lose. That was then. This be now. Is that what sort of man thou hast become?
father? Pleading for thy life once thou art bested. To think that such a failure is mine own flesh and blood disgusts me to my core. Father, I won't defy thee ever again. I promise. Silence. With that, my preparations are complete. Preparations, you say? There is no longer any man left in Ardra who would dare make an attempt on my life. All threats to Likaros have thus been eliminated. For my son, who was my last remaining concern, has finally met his end. I now have no lingering thoughts about my future. Madness. Now then, Lord Gilgamesh. I have unified all of Ardra under me as thou requested. Exactly where is this new enemy thou spoke of? Just point the way, and I can immediately dispatch my great and glorious army to wherever our opponent awaits. <laughs> Very well. I shall guide you there. This is a fool's errand, Gilgamesh. I am well aware of that. But what if we were to pit this self-declared King's army against the Realm Scourge? It might serve us well to examine the results. I guess you are right. While they stand no chance of defeating the Realm Scourge, it will at least be interesting to see what they can achieve. Imagine such an expanse of caves existed under Leonis. Thou sayest our foe hideth somewhere down here? It is just ahead. What in damnation? Does the mere sight of it strike you with dread? Thou sayest this monster is even more powerful than thee? It is indeed. So if I defeat this, I shall be equal to the gods! If that is what you want, I will gladly recognize you as such. By the by, Why does it not move? Has it not noticed our presence yet? It has, but Amalus's magic keeps it at bay for now. But once it smells the scent of blood, it will grow ferocious and break through its binding by brute force. At least that'll make it things interesting. It wouldn't be much to brag about for us to slay a beast who offereth us not resistance. All forces on my command, charge! Show that unholy demon what the men of Ardra are made of! They are no match for the Frenzied Realm Scourge, which is pretty much what we expected. Tis... useless! 
will never be able to beat this thing! Retreat! Everyone, run for your lives! It's over. It would appear that way. Why do you take my hand? This is the only way to ensure your memories, your soul, are kept intact. Let us return to the past. Back at the restoration point. Yes. I seem to have indeed kept my memories of the future. Thanks to your help last time, I was able to find this door. And what lies beyond said door? An underground chamber. Come, I'll show you. What is all this? This room was originally built as a shelter. I thought it would be a good place to keep the device out of sight from prying eyes. A wise idea. Answering your earlier query, the reason why we were able to maintain our memories from the future after returning to the past is this. The person who holds this crystal and anyone who is touching that person when the device is triggered will return to this point in time with their memories intact. So... Anyone else will have no recollection of that future timeline, then. Precisely. How much magical energy does your crystal have? Enough. But... I know. I do not intend to misuse the energy we have. What we were missing in our first attempt was the mutual respect and the desire to cooperate among our candidates. The ability to win people's hearts and minds and bring them together as one. We need to find a means to that end, or someone who can make that happen for us. Yes. Maybe that person will turn out to be the very bearer of light we are destined to meet. Then let us hold off in trusting rings to people, and instead, focus our efforts on locating that individual. It might take years, if not decades, for them to appear where we can locate them. We need to build a base of operations somewhere secluded from the general populace of Ardra. Yes. I suppose we will be here for some time, after all. <laughs> <laughs> 